going to start off with number 19. This is talking about a translation, which is how do you slide it, left, right, up, or down. And it wants to know how the point negative 3, 1 became the point 5, 5. So quite honestly, I just kind of went through the answer choices. <clears throat> I started with answer choice A. And so I took my x coordinate and I added 8 to it, like it says. And that made a 5, which is what I wanted. Check. And then I took the y coordinate, which was a 1, and I added 4 to it. And that made a 5, which is what they wanted. So check. That was it. Okay, number 20. This is another translation. It tells you to take your x coordinate and subtract 1. So that's what I did. I took my x coordinate of 3, I subtracted 1, which gave me a 2. And then it told me to take my y coordinate and subtract 3. So I did that. I took my y coordinate, negative 5, and I subtracted 3, which gave me negative 8. And that gave me answer choice C. The translations are very easy. Just left, right, up, or down. This tells you what to do to your x. This tells you what to do to your y. Very simple. Okay, 21 was asking what type of transformation this is. So I know anytime I see something that looks like this, that this is a translation. It's just how do you slide it around, left, right, up, or down. And just to go through it, if you add 2 to your x coordinate, that would take you right to. If you subtract 2 from your y coordinate, that would take you down to. And the question didn't ask that. They just wanted to know which kind of transformation it would be. And that's a translation. So if you ever see something look like this, add something to your x, subtract something from your x, add something to your y, subtract something from your y, then that is a translation. It's just sliding your shape left, right, up, or down. Okay, 22. This is another translation we have going on here. So it wants to know the other coordinates of point C. So I just focused in on A to see what happened. And the 1 changed to a 4. So that means we had to add 3. The y coordinate went from a 3 to a 4, which means it went up by 1. So I knew that my x needed to go up by 3, my y needed to go up by 1. So then when I looked at point C, I did the same thing. I took my x coordinate and I took it up by 3, and I took my y coordinate and I took it up by 1, and that gave me answer choice C, 7, 1. So I just tried to figure out what happened to A. And the 1 changed to a 4, which means it went up by 3. The 3 changed to a 4, which means it went up by 1. And so then I just did that to my C point. Okay, number 23. This one here. When it talks about a reflection in the origin, that really is a rotation of 180 degrees. And it doesn't matter if you go 180 counterclockwise or 180 clockwise, you get to the same point. So we have a rule for 180 degree rotation, and that says that your x coordinate, your xy, your order, original ordered pair becomes the opposite of x, the opposite of y. So I did just that. I took the point negative 2, 5. And I took the opposite of the x, so the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. I took the opposite of y, the opposite of 5, and that gave me a negative 5. And then I just drew a little rough sketch of what it would look like. And it would come down here, and that's where your 2, negative 5 would land. So a reflection in the origin is the same thing as a rotation of 180 degrees. <clears throat> Okay, 24. This is talking about a reflection in the line y equals x. So we have a rule for that too. And it says your ordered pair xy will become yx. So my ordered pair, negative 4, 3, it becomes y. So I start with the 3 and then the x, so negative 4. As long as you know these rules for your reflections or your rotations, they're very easy to do. You just do what the rule tells you. Your ordered pair just becomes yx. Okay, 25. This one, I could have followed a rule 
I decided not to follow a rule. I just decided to draw a picture because this is real easy for me. If I want to take the point 1, negative 3 and reflect it in the y-axis, that means I want to reflect it across this y-axis here. So if I go once to the left, I'm on the y-axis, so I need to go once more to the left to get to its reflection point, and that is the ordered pair negative 1, negative 3. And I could have just followed the rule, but if I reflect something along the y-axis or I reflect something along the x-axis, it's just as easy for me to just draw a little picture, count how far it is away from the y-axis or x-axis depending, and then make that move again, and boom, you've got your reflection point. Okay, 26. Twenty-six is a reflection in the x-axis. So, I just drew another picture. Instead of following a rule, I just drew a picture. So, I plotted the point negative 3, 7. So, I go left 3 and up 7. If I want to reflect it in the x-axis, I want to reflect it over this orange line I just drew. And I just count how far down it is till I land on it. And if you go down 7, you land on it. So, go down 7 again and boom, you've got your reflection point, which is negative 3, negative 7. So that is a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, 27. This is new stuff. We just talked about this. Just took a test over this. If I want to know about longest versus shortest, wherever my biggest angle is, the side across from that will be the longest. So I know side XY is the longest, but none of my answer choices said that. If I look for my smallest angle, I know the side across from that will be my shortest side, and that showed up, which was answer choice B. So the longest side's across from your biggest angle, your shortest side is across from your smallest angle. Okay, 28 wants to know what kind of a triangle this is. Well, I know if I ever have an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees that I do have an obtuse triangle. And if all these angles are different measurements, then all these sides would be different measurements. And if all the sides are something different, then it is scalene. Okay, 29. <coughs> It says which pair of angles is congruent. So I just went through the choices, and when I get to angle 4 and angle 5, I can see that those are corresponding angles. And as long as line G and H are parallel, then the corresponding angles will be congruent. Now let's just look at the other ones that they gave us for a second. Answer choice A gave me angle 1 and angle 2. What do we know about angle 1 and angle 2? They're supplementary they're a linear pair. They form this straight line right here, so these two add to be 180. So I know that those are supplementary. If I look at angle 2 and angle 3, right here and right here, again, those are supplementary. They form a, a linear pair, so I know it's not those guys. And then 3 and 7 are right here and here, and those are same side interior angles, same side supplementary, same side supplementary. Doesn't matter if they're same side interior or same side exterior. They'll always be supplementary as long as your lines are parallel. So same side, supplementary, same side, supplementary. Okay, number 30. <clears throat> For problems like this, I really just have to draw a picture. Now your picture could look different than mine. I just had to make sure that AB had a length of 12, that BC has a length of 10, and AC has a length of 15. And then if I want to put my angles in order from smallest to largest, I look for my smallest side, the angle across from that, ch -ch 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 -ch, angle A, will be my smallest angle. And B is the only one that starts with angle A. But if I went through, my next smallest side is the 12. If I find the angle across from that, ch -ch 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 -ch, angle C, that's my next biggest angle. And so then angle B has to be the largest of them all. Okay, number 31. 
We are almost done with this bad boy. 31. Let me unzoom this just a tad so you can see it all. Okay, we are told something about angle 1 and angle 6. If I look at angle 1 and angle 6, I know that those are corresponding angles. And since my lines are parallel, I know my corresponding angles are congruent. So I just set angle 1 equal to angle 6, and then I just go through the solving process. I get an answer of x equals 5. And then when it says find the measure of angle 1, I just need to plug 5 into that x right there. So 3 times 5 plus 30, and voila, I get 45 degrees for angle 1. Okay, so your corresponding angles are congruent as long as your lines are parallel. Your alternate interior angles are congruent as long as the lines are parallel. Your alternate exterior angles are congruent as long as the lines are parallel. The ones that are supplementary are your same side stuff. So your same side interior and your same side exterior, like 1 and 5, 2 and 8. Same side, supplementary, same side, supplementary. Okay, number 32. <laughs> number 32 gives us something. Oh, I gotta unzoom again. Number 32 gives us something about angle 3 and angle 7 and they tell us that the lines are parallel. These are same side interior angles, also known as consecutive interior angles. And same side supplementary, same side supplementary. So these two angles add together to equal 180. And then I just go through my solving process. I combine my x's, I combine my constants, subtract the 100 from both sides, divide by 40, and I get an answer choice of x equals 2. And that's all this one wanted. It didn't want to know the measure of angle 3 or the measure of angle 7 or any other angles. It just wanted to know what is x. So hopefully that was easy enough. Okay, and the last problem is here. This one tells us something about angle 1 and angle 8. So I do have to know what kind of angles these are. And these are alternate exterior angles and I know that since my lines are parallel or well I want the lines to be parallel if I want the lines to be parallel my alternate exterior angles have to be congruent and then it wants to know what the value of X and the value of Y would be would it be 12 would it be 15 would it be 5 so I just go through a process here of plugging things in to try to figure out when I get the angles congruent so, these are my choices for x, 12, 15, and 5, and they're the same choices for y, 12, 15, and 5. So first I put the 12 in the x, then the 15, then the 5, and I see what I get for angles. I do the same thing for angle y. I put the 12 in, the 15, and the 5 in, and I need congruent angles, and the only time I get congruent angles is when we put 12 in for the x, and we put 5 in for the y, and that gave me congruent angles. They're both 40 degrees, so that has to be the answer. X has to be 12, Y has to be 5, because that's the only time that we ended up with congruent angles. So if you want lines to be parallel, alternate, inter alternate interior, alternate exterior angles have to be congruent, corresponding angles have to be congruent, but your same side interior and your same side exterior have to be supplementary. Same side supplementary. Okay? And there it all is. Hopefully you guys are ready for your six weeks test. I wish you all the best. See ya.